We are stepping away from route redistribution just a little bit in this video, but don't worry, we've got plenty more to come. I wanted to show you how we could use a distribute list to filter routes being advertised via a given interface in EIGRP without making that interface passive, because what's going to happen there, I think, and we'll find out shortly, is that we're going to lose the adjacency. Now, the addressing in this network is the same as it was in the previous, and I'll give that to you quickly. It's 172.12.123.0, as always, over the frame between 1, 2, and 3, and routers 1 and 5 are on the 3110-24 network. Router 2 is advertising two routes into EIGRP, and routers 1 and 5 should certainly see them. And here's router 5's table, and it sees the 2 network, it sees the 22 network, and the 172.12.123 network uh, as EIGRP routes. So what we'd like to do is filter these routes without R5 and R1's adjacency coming down. So we think a passive interface will not do the job, but let's try one anyway. Good little passive uh, review here. Passive interface, and it's under the EIGRP config, not on the interface itself. And we're going to put fast 0 slash 0 there. That's the interface leading to 5. And boy, that didn't take long. You can see, and it spells it out for us, dual 5 neighbor change. And the neighbor is 3115. The interface is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. And the status is bad because it's gone down. And it even tells us why. The interface is passive. With all of that data, I think it's pretty safe to say that that's not the solution we want. So let's just do an up here. Control A to go to the front of that line. And it's no passive interface 0 slash 0. And the neighbor comes right back up. Now let's go back over to 5. A little fat finger there. There we go. And we'll make sure it sees those routes again, and it does. They've been there for 13 whole seconds. So now let's try an access list and a distribute list, and we're going to go over to router 1. And let's say the bosses that be have told us we don't want any of those routes going over, but you and I don't want that adjacency lost. So we're going to write an access list first. Let's write an access list first. And we'll do access list 5. And here we're just going to do a deny any. And that's it. So now we'll go under the EIGRP process and see if we have any limitations like we had with OSPF. So we're going to do a distribute list 5. And we're going to filter outgoing routing updates. Routing updates, that is, not routing updates. And we're going to name the interface like we tried last time, I believe. And looks good so far. So we didn't get any messages saying we've lost the adjacency or that we couldn't do it. And now let's go over to router 5 and see what the result is. And there they are. They're gone. But, and we will check it anyway. The adjacency to 3111 is still there. And you can see with the uptime of a minute and 29 seconds, that's one great thing about having the uptime there. We know that even though we didn't see any console messages, we know for sure that the adjacency didn't even bounce. And it did resync. You can see we did a pure graceful restart there with neighbor 111, excuse me, 3111 there at the top. One more thing before we head to the next vid is show IP protocols. And you can also see your distribute list information here. It's, uh, it's put a little um, formerly here, outgoing update filter list for all interfaces not set. But you can see fast Ethernet filtered by 5, which of course is referring to the distribute list and then the access list. So that's really about it for this particular video. This is a quicker one. I wanted to show you that. The next lab is a lot longer, so I'm not going to piggyback it on this one. But what we're going to do in the next one is bring route redistribution back in. And the lab has a slightly different topology, which this is to say it has a very different topology. So I'm going to stop this video, and at the beginning of the next one, we'll do some more route redistribution, this time with EIGRP.